Hi guys, I love to listen and find out what you guys want to hear, see, and learn. And what's exciting is when I can find something that I can break down to different styles, like an iris, and we're going to do an iris today, and I'm doing different strokes to make irises happen, like if you were doing orchids, there's all different types of strokes in an orchid. And so we're going to break those down and make it easy for you to jump in and be able to do this. So let's get started. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with you on, I'm going to go to overhead camera and work with you on how to make this iris happen. So I'm going to get down closer. So we're right here. And so we have different petals. There's different types of irises. Um, here's a few just to see. All right. There's this style. We're going to do some petals to practice first. And this is a worksheet that, um, a worksheet pack that we're going to end up with this fun one. Okay. And look at this one. I love all the colors in this one. Look how rich we can get multi layering colors. And this bright, vivid one, different colors. This is a different style of iris. Now, I don't know all the names of the styles of irises, but if you're out there and they're growing in your yard, I'm sure that you know some of these. Okay, so I'm going to start and get going with mostly, I think we can use a 12 sometimes, but it's mostly a 16 and a 3 quarter. And we're using flats, okay? We're also going to use... Um, a little floating medium, so I'll put the floating medium out. All right, that's just for, I'm on paper, and if you're on canvas, you'll have that also. And the first thing uh, that you'll notice a lot in irises is uh, purples. All right, so this iris color is violet pansy. It's a little bit darker than perfect purple. This is multi-surface paint I'm using. I love multi-surface because you put one set of paints out and use it on many different surfaces. All right, and sometimes I might want it a little bit darker. So I'm gonna put a little bit, excuse me, of ink spot just to richen the purple because we don't have diaxazine purple now. And I need some white. Okay, so what is that? Oh, that's a piece of plastic, here we go. All right, so. This white's a little thick. I think it might be okay though still. All right, and then I like to bring in some yellow. So let's put some bright yellow. These are like standard colors you see in a lot of really pretty irises. And then they get fancy with every color you can imagine that have been hybrid or, or grown and, and um, raised to be different looks and types, okay? So I wet my brush first, and I do have paper towels. There they are. All right, so I let my wet my brush, lay it on a paper towel, and then we're ready to go. All right, so let's look at some of these strokes. This is a center stroke. This is the left side, the right side, and my worksheet has arrows telling you that. There's a there's a little bit that um, is on the side of each one of those on the right side, left side, and then these are the downward turns, and this is the one right in the center. Okay. So you can practice right on the guide with me, but I want to go to, let's do this big one first, okay? And so I should start with the small, uh, easier ones first, but I want you to try this with me so you get the principle of what all we're working with, okay? Um, I'm putting the, the greenery to this, the foliage later. Let's just work on how we're gonna lay this out. So do you see there's the center, two sides. Now these are the little pieces that can go down to the side and then we go and add the yellow on the sides and the center. Okay. So now I do use a 16 sometimes so that you can fit it better. But I want you to see that I'm going to pick up white and I'm going to work over here really good. Okay. Working this purple in medium to work it in more. My white and my purple are a little thick. Okay, now what I'm trying to do is get the white worked out to the edge. So I really want um, at least two-thirds or three-fourths 
purple, one third or one fourth white. One fourth really is what we want for this. All right, so now I'm going to show you by putting the white on the outside the way I loaded it. It'll be the white on the outside, which is a little bit different than what I just what I just showed you. Okay, so we're going to come up and around and come back down. So let's practice that again. All right, so we're going to come up. See, I'm just doing an easy wiggle right now. I have a fancier one later. Now, if you don't feel comfortable coming back down on that side, you can flip yours totally over, and you can do a, a nice, smooth coming down. Okay? Now, you can turn this around. All right, and pick up more purple. Like I keep coming over here, picking up more purple. Now, I don't come so close. This is what people make a mistake. I don't come way in there and get all that goop. This is what I tell people to do. Okay, when you need to come get purple, I could dip the white. I'm going to lay it away from the, can you see that? I'm laying it away from the big edge. And then I push down to just a little bit of the edge touches that puddle. All right. So now I'm going to, here's my V to start. Like you can say, here's an arrow. I'm going to start out here. And then I can come around the other side. All right. Now I want you to practice these on the guide as you go. And any of you who order this online, you need to look for the iris guide. We should have it shown so you can see. All right, so there I am. I've got plenty of paint, a little bit of medium. And it's important that you stroke that whole thing, even if some of it gets covered by the side petals. All right, so I'm going to get a little bit on the purple edge because the purple edge is what is showing a little bit of dry. Now, one thing that will help you for the next step is we're going to come here. So let me show you. It's, we have this with an arrow. All right. Now what happens on these arrows, which I will have one here and one here, is that I'm going to start on this edge and I'm going to wiggle, wiggle, and the center is going to run up there. So I want to stay out here and come in, all right? So a lot of people slide it down and make it a really not nice look. So what I want to show you is we do need to learn to slide it down. So when we're sliding it down, what we're going to do, we're going to continue, and we're going to wiggle a little bit on this side. And right here, we're going to twist, 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 twist and come back down, all right? So if I didn't stop, I wouldn't have, I guess, more, more purple. And then come back down, and you get a nicer movement, okay? So let me show you what we're going to do. And turn it around so it's comfortable for you, all right? I'm going to make it come out. All right, over the top. And, oops, see, that's too much medium. I lost all my white. So I should have gone and got more white right then when I started. But this is okay. We can still come up here. Then we're going to lay it out, all out, and then we're going to spin and come back. All right? So let's turn it the other way. I'm going to pick up more paint. Out, out, but curve. So I'm curving in, and I'm going to make a little bit of wiggle and then twist. All right? So what happens, and you can fix this if you're not really happy with the center of it. All right? One of the ways that I like to do, too, is I can come here. And then twist at the end. 
see then cover it a little bit more. But I do like to come in and do some of those strokes there I just showed you where we curve it so you don't see it. But because I want to see a little bit more of that in the middle. Okay, so now there's these little short strokes out here. And in my worksheet, I flipped up a little bit. I don't know why I flipped up a little bit there. I like it better like this. I guess to get out of the way for the yellow. And remember, with one stroke painting, it's wonderful because if you don't like something, you just re-stroke it. See, I didn't like the way the white looked there. All right, so now look on this side. We're going to come down, push, and lift up. Now that's an important stroke, so let's see it again. We wiggle out, come to the point, reverse direction, push down, and slide. When I, it's reverse directions of the pedals, okay? So we've done all of these, and now we're going to work on this. All right, so there's a yellow one or um, the other one. That's what I'm going to work on for this, okay? All right, so, oh, this was all yellow. I'm going to show you it purple. Okay, so this is the key. I wipe off excess paint. All right, I don't, I just wipe it on a paper towel. I don't take and squeeze it between the paper towel to get it all out because I still want some in there. All right, lots of medium, get it worked into the white, and look, We've got one fourth of the brush with a little bit of purple. All right. Then, what did I do on here? Oh. Then I'm going to work in my yellow. So come over. It's like you dip over here into the purple. You have purple and white. If you go purple and yellow, it's going to be muddy, not a pretty color. The white helps us look good. Okay, so you just come right over there, and there we're going to be ready. Okay, so now look what happens here. I'm going to come right under here. See this? And as I come up, I'm going to twist, 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 twist. All right, so that's a separate petal that I want to show you over here. I'm starting with my arrow again. So I'm starting here. And then back up. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Okay. So then we get fresh paint. See that? I came down a little bit low on these. They should have been up a little bit higher probably. But it's, it's good there still. I just want to come out so that I can... The whole time you're placing this one, remembering that dead center in the middle, um, you are going to come with that big fat petal in the middle. So we twist there. Okay. So what's going to happen is we're going to pick up lots of purple this time because I want a dramatic right in the middle. Okay. Oh, y'all aren't seeing me. There we go. See, I picked up more purple, came over and worked that in. Really good. Okay. Now, a couple of things. I can twist this and put the yellow on the outside, but I just want it stronger here. Purple. Right here is where I could, look, I picked up a little bit of night sky on the corner and make it more intense, and I'll show you what the difference that will make. See how that makes it stand out from all the rest? Just gives it some uh, deeper look. But, and these are all pretty roughly, so I wanted that longer. So see, I'm going to come up. All right. But see, that changes the color a little bit. And this is one of those big, bold, ruffled ones. All right. Now, a couple little things you can do on some of these flowers. Depends on which flower we're working on is I will take, which, which um, iris, I like to come right in here even and tap. Okay. 
Now, I want you to look at the flowers, take pictures of the flowers you want to paint, and look at how I would break down each segment to make it be able to do a um, one stroke type stroke that will look like that petal, all right? So sometimes the yellow's up there, sometimes the yellow's here. And you can come back and float colors in here. But if you have the best colors as you go, then you won't have any problem with having to do that. Now see these petals, you really want those to be up. And I probably should use a 16 to make that happen, but I'm gonna go in there and show you that with one stroke, you can always correct it too. So I'm gonna come right in here and come up more. See right up in here. And if you're in here, when you put this pedal, you won't have a problem. See, it needs to be higher. All right, I wanna show you a couple of leaves. All right, now this is really wide. Some of them might be like that, but I want to show you some leaves that um, we could use. And I'm going to change my plate because I'm going to go back and use that plate. And I'm going to pick up citrus green. Okay. And you can use some yellow in here sometime too. But um, I think I actually use lime green. I don't know what I'm saying. So these are colors I like because if you don't have lime green, you can use citrus. And I like sap green for the iris because it's gold and darker. And that's my iris is always, we are in Florida, so we have the this iris here in Florida, okay? And not, not many of the big, full, fancy ones that we're painting will grow in the Florida uh, temperature. All right, so then I'm going to put some extra white down. And white's real important when I'm trying to get my look, okay? Okay, so let's, we still need some medium, but I have a lot of medium here. Leaves especially need medium, okay? So also look at this. I'm going to show you later. We put a center to set it if we don't do those little poofy little stamens I showed you. All right, so really set, this is your practice sheet that's important that you sit and work with. If you work on these strokes over and over till you get that little turn that I make and, the, and this little twist that when we come over to the left and right, it'll make a big difference in you being able to paint all the flowers that I'm showing you, okay? And I need you just to sit and practice on them. All right, so there's some leaves in here that I wanna show you. There is a flip leaf that I've done for years. And the key is the white's here and the white comes around, all right? Then there's different ways to do a tall slender leaf. And then this leaf is two parts. And it's kind of like a cheater, but it really isn't. It's a fun look and easy to achieve by most people who don't feel comfortable doing the whole flip, turn, roll, and come down, okay? So let's work on those because you're gonna need those in each one of your designs, all right? So I'm gonna come here and pick up, this is lime and sap, all right? And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white on the lime green side. Okay, all right, so here we go. The first thing I want to do is, here's the chisel, and here's a side, oops, this view, okay? So you don't want to push down and come straight up like this. You can do that when you're trying to get some grass, thin lines, okay? If I'm doing a stem, I come up under the iris when I can see, that, see it, and I'm cutting down straight like this. I also have a larger looking base, which is really kind of like this. And I'll show you some of that. We grab the bud with chisel strokes, like daisy strokes. I flatten it and pick up more paint. And then this is a little 
bulb type base, okay? So what happens, and actually they, they come down a lot like gladiolas and all sometimes, okay? I'm still pulling this way when I'm at the base. And only a few of those you see. Now this is what I want you to see that I do this with Bird of Paradise and some other um, other art, uh, flowers that I can come right here and lay it down. And then come right down here and lay it down. And we can make it come on down the stem that's holding it. Okay, but not very often will you see that. Okay, so now remember, I told you this is coming out, uh, you know, with that mess. That is kind of chisel, and they don't have a real thin stem because they're holding this big, huge, heavy flower, all right? So I want to show you that um, neither one of those are good. I'm gonna, these angles, but angles are important. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to touch. I can come out uh, like if it's in the ground and lay down. Stand up. And come out. Now, if you want to turn it, it's fine to turn it, guys. But I'm chisel, lay down, stand up, and go to the tip. Well, I've got some dry edges, so what do I need? I need medium. Okay, so I'm going to pick up some darker, oh, wrong color, all right, medium, so it'll go smooth on the paper. All right, so this is important, watch this, I want you to practice, chisel, chisel, lay, chisel, stand, then chisel, lay, turn, 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 and lift. All right, you can fix that little spot. All right, then you can do chisel, lay, chisel, lay, and twist. All right, so I want you to see the different looks that you can do, and then I want you to turn it the other way and do a chisel, lay, chisel. See, I need to make that a little bit smoother. So look, chisel. And turn. Okay. Chisel, push, chisel, push. All right. So go both ways. Now, what I say this is, is they're hard. The iris I'm talking about has this hard, hard, long leaf. All right. Um, when you look in the ground, sometimes they do come like this. But it doesn't look good in a painting when it's flat like that. So I like to, like, start it out kind of a little bit on a chisel. And then you can have it flat towards you or sideways. Now, when the wind hits this, it does this look. This. It waves part of the, the greenery. So now what I want to do is I want to show you some of those turn leaves. All right. So I'm going to start on the chisel, push hard, stand up, stand up, stand up to the chisel, roll the brush in your fingers, and come down. So you want to keep moving. All right, I'm going to work this paint in. I'm going to get some medium. Now, many people who work on the iris in our level two cert, they, I don't see any, it's all dark. And we need color so we can see it. We're on a black background. And so I need to see this happen. I need to see that we're sliding up, pushing down. Standing up, standing up, standing up, and roll. All right. 
So I want to show you that you can take it another way. You can come up, lay it down. Oops. What you need to do is try this both ways. I'm going to come up here, roll, and go out this way. So you have a couple of different looks, but this is the key. You got to come back up here, push and go both ways when you're practicing, okay? All right, do it both ways. All right, now what we want to do is a little trick that I have. All right, so I'm going to show you that we're going to chisel up and we're going to leave the dark on the outside. Take out fresh paint. Now, whatever's on the outside is what follows. Now, we're going to take that dark green following. Okay, so I'm going to come along here and go over the top and stand up. All right, so that dark green's got to go all along there and touch that and come down. Now, that's real important. Now, a lot of people do this, and I want you to see what they do wrong. As we're coming up and we're going over, okay, so it's, we want it smooth. All right, so this is what they do. Now, look, I'm going to show you the difference of the two. They come right here. Even if they do this right, they come down, and they just stroke straight down. So it's broken. All right, I want this nice smooth loop over. Okay, fresh paint. All right, let's turn the brush another way. We are going to have the light coming up. All right, or we have it going this way. So I need more paint, more paint, medium. Okay, now watch what happens. The light follows there, so I'm on the absolute chisel. I come around, and then I drop it. All right, now look what happens. The light was out here. It continued here, so the dark's back there and the dark's over there, and it looks like natural, like that's what it would do. See, when I roll this brush, which is more difficult, the dark green always stays on that side. Okay, so let's try this one. It's light over here, so the light follows the dark green. Oops. All right, so you can flip up, or you can go this way and flip down. Now, this helps you more than ever to see that loading is so important because you're going to get, like how you're going to get, like, pretty white tips. It's going to help it show better, all right? So I got to keep going. So these you have to sit down and practice, all right? Now, let's go. This is that stem I was telling you that would show right here. So we do a base. I forgot. That's how I did the base. And then I did these little guys on the side, okay? So I'm going to put this flower together with you so we feel comfortable with what that's going to be like. Now, it's real important that you stop the video and you go practice, all right? Now, I'm going to use the 16 on some of these so that we can get this move, all right? Now, I'm not necessarily going from the easiest to the hardest. I'm kind of bouncing around. Um, by how I decided which flowers to do, all right? So I'm working in probably about half and half on this one. All right, so when I say half and half, you're getting all kinds of really pretty color um, in between white, lavender, and purple. So here's the center, the feature center of this flower. So I'm going to be offset. I, want, I looked at this real pretty flower. And look, I wave in and out. And even if you do it just like I did in the practice sheet of petals. Oops, I'm off the top. Even if I do the practice sheet of petals exactly smoother than this one, instead of rolling, it's fine. But I want you to see... I'm going to pick up so I see a difference in color. 
I put some ink spot into the purple. All right. And I'm going to come right in here. So I want to sidestep that petal a little bit. And this is going to be all out here. So we're out in and out. You can see when I'm running out of paint. All right. And we come in. Okay. So those are going to be the two back ones. And then I'm going to need some more medium because they're pretty dry. And I want the front of it to have more of that blue. So we've got purple and white, a little bit of blue. Doesn't have to be a lot to make it look richer. Remember, without dioxazine purple, I had that really rich, darker. So we're going to put blue in there to get that feel. But I want fresh white. Remember, sometimes the white's smooth and easier to work with. This is a little thick. All right, so I'm going to get medium again. So, And sometimes you only need medium in the edge that's going to be making all the moves. So I'm going to just pick it up on the purple edge, and then you're ready to go. All right. So with this petal, you can practice on your practice sheet. But what's going to happen here is I like to go like this to see where I'm coming, where I'm going to be going, okay? And remember, we have the arrows. All right. So... When I start here, I'm going to wave it in and out, okay? And then I get a little bit wider out here, out. See, that medium really helps in here right now. Now, I'm, I can still stop, remember? Stop, and then I roll. Roll. See now, you want to be big enough that enough pressure that you fill in all that area right in there. Okay. Now, if I'm on this side, make sure that I need a little bit more blue again because I used it all. A little bit of medium. Okay. See so on this side, I'm going to kind of look at what I did on the other side instead of looking at the picture I'm following. Okay. Now, remember what I said, turn it around so it's comfortable for you. Okay. Let's move it right over here. I'm going off the side. All right, see, that's it. See, when it's going like that, it's dry. I need to come get more paint. So I dip the medium and then stroke back into my puddle of paint. Okay, so I got to come down more to make it even to the other side. Okay. And turn. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to worry. Oh, <laughs> this looked way longer to me when I was over there. All right. So uh, what I'm doing is this is off balance. This is good. I did this example so you can see what not to do. <laughs> I actually did this with a large... Um, Three quarter, but what I want to show you is that this needs to be that big. And I looked over here and I, I should have stopped there. But remember when I went, let's do a little bit more. All right, so let me do it again for you. Now, watch how I'm loading. Okay, picking up some blue. Maybe I'll do the blue in the background on the top medium. Okay, that's the first load, so I put medium in the whole thing. All right, so here's your center again. And it can help you uh, to mark out where you want to go. All right, so then I'm going to come here. All right, and then remember I have these little guys here. And these stand out more, remember? It stands out like it's poofy up here. And this one is a little bit longer than this one in my picture, too. But um, what we want to do first is come way out here. Remember I said in and out, a little bit fancier. Now I'm going to go ahead. I'm picking up some more paint, so lots of paint, guys. I'm going to come in here. 
and even though it's going to be underneath, I still want to do the whole stroke. All right. So now I'm not going to go, let's see, I'm losing my color. I'm not going to go into blue this time because it's real important too that you see different colors of petals. Now this is what I would do, remember, just pick up on the purple side. All right, so I'm gonna come in here and I, I'm gonna end up right in here, okay? So remember there's this is the arrow and we wanna curve that way. All right, that's gonna help you lay it out. Now it only this this picture that I saw for this iris, it you could only see two petals up here, which there might be more petals, but that's all that showed. All right, so I'm gonna come in here. See right in here, you really need the three quarter. All right, so I'm gonna come. Let's go back to here. Now look, I'm going to wiggle out, slide in. What's what? Oh, I'm mad at myself for not using a three quarter. I have it. All right. So what we're doing is it's going to be easier. Let me just grab it and show you. Remember what I said? It's fun to go right back over the stroke so there's no mistakes. You can just come right back in here. I want to show you how much easier it is. I'm fighting it. Okay. All right. So I'm here. Go in and out and in and out. And there we go. All right. So the only thing I wish I did was turn it in more. I come in this way a little bit more. Remember the arrow I did? But I was worried more about covering what I just did. Now, if you go over your piece over and over and over, you're going to lose the prettiness of it. <laughs> so but this is a good practice for you. All right. So I'm going to keep this brush because I can get that small look I need for the base, even with this brush. I just thought it'd be easier with the 16, but I make my own self crazy. All right, so I'm gonna come here. All right, now I wanna really turn this. Okay, so it is actually skinnier up here. It's actually skinny here. And then it got fatter at the base and you can stop guys and come this way if it's easier for you okay so then what i'm going to do in here is i'm going to come in here with the yellow which makes a huge difference right see it's easy to clean that up but you have to clean that up because we're going to put yellow there and i also want to go back and show you that this is how I did the base of this, okay? Remember the green? All right, so you're gonna come right in here and you're gonna pull it down. And this is quick and easy ways to paint irises that you never thought you could paint before, right? What? I don't know. All right, now what's gonna happen here is we're going to come right down here and pull this on that side. And remember I told you we're going to go straight down and it makes it a real pretty finish on it. Now we're going to come in here with yellow. I can use my little scruffy, but sometimes I just tap the chisel edge, okay? Now I do a little bit of white so we have a little bit of brightness at the top and you're passing it into a totally dry brush. This is the small scruffy. Now what, what you want to do, I showed you in here where we're tapping in here and we're deciding where we want to go to. So we want it skinny down here. 
and tap it coming back and that helps you control yourself just a little bit all right so now i can come back in and just tap a little yellow i mean white what am i talking about a little bit of white on the tip here all right so you can decide that's not as as um, textured as i like so i want to and these are really kind of poofy pollen like there all right so if i i packed all my brushes up for a trip i'm getting ready to do so look so i've got yellow and i pick up white so the other way remember i said i started here so you see where you're going to be and I'm just gonna tap it, and I want this bottom to be here, the tip of that to be there, and I'm just tapping it as I go. So I'm gonna turn it so you can see better on the camera. All right, so there we go. So just to get a little bit more texture than the scruffy, I like a different look on some of them sometimes. I haven't totally gone away from the scruffy. I know people are saying, why are you using the scruffy for that? Mm -hmm. I want you to see what I've got going here. Okay, so you decide texture. I use the same brush on here. But having a little bit more texture over here would be good. This work she's already done. I'm still tapping on it. <laughs> okay, so you can see my yellows aren't even, so you want to come back here and put more yellow. And it's really nice, and sometimes I put a teeny bit in there. But real simple. See you next time.